Okay, so this video is to uh, introduce you to the new Interlogix motorized focus cameras, uh, the TVB and TVD 5305 and 5306. Uh, the motorized focus cameras are the newest version from Interlogix, and as such, uh, they've increased the cybersecurity in them to uh, remove the default password. Uh, so without a default password, uh, the plug and play on a TVN10 uh, is not working uh, and the camera actually needs to be activated before you can use it. The uh, important thing here is uh, to know how to use device manager to activate your cameras. Uh, the benefit here is that with no default password, there's no uh, default password for hackers to exploit uh, in any vulnerabilities. So when you first activate the camera, you give it a password and that is the, the password that's in the recorder. Uh, one thing you might notice if the first time you plug one of these cameras into a TVN10, uh, you'll notice that the camera stays offline and the plug and play doesn't work. Um, that's indicative of using one of these new cameras that has not been activated. The easiest way to do this is to um, bring your device manager into play. Uh, let's lower this one here, bring up our device manager. You'll see that I am plugged into the camera side of the TVN10. This allows my laptop to see all the cameras that are plugged in and you'll notice that this camera here is still at the default address and is showing inactive. Even though the recorder thinks that it gave it a new address of 254.2, uh, because it has not been activated, none of those changes were made. So the easiest way to activate this camera is to click on the camera and go to modify network parameters and once I click that it sees that it's an inactive camera and it asks me to activate it by typing in a password. Uh, your password needs to be at least eight digits and include letters and numbers. Um, I'm going to use a fairly simple one here. Uh, make sure you, whatever you use, you know and, and remember as a, as a company so that you can get back into these cameras later. Uh, once I click OK, uh, you'll notice the device is now active and, and the status changes, but my IP address is still a 1.70, which is the default. Um, as you know, uh, working with TVN10s, uh, the address for the cameras is a 254 address. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to reassign this address uh, to be 254 and let's go with dot 50. I'm just going with a high number to stay out of the range where the recorder might give it to another camera uh, and then change the, the uh, gateway to 254.1. By making this change, I do need to type in my new password here. Uh, by making this change, now the network parameters for this camera now fit inside uh, what is needed for the recorder. Once that is done, the recorder still thinks that it gave it an address of 254.2, uh, but we know that I just changed it to 2.50. So click on that camera, hit modify, change the plug and play to manual so that I can make some changes here. And now I'm going to change that to 50. And I'm going to type in my newly set up uh, activation password. Uh, once I hit OK, this will go offline for a little bit as it resets the codec. Uh, and figures out the, uh, that the camera is a dot .50. And now if I go back to my live view, you can see my nice video tent that I've got going here. Uh, now I pull up camera 3, which is still got the cover on it, which you can see, but now I'm up and running with my new camera. So the key with this is to understand how to activate a camera and use Device Manager, uh, and then you can get in and, and use these cameras almost as easy as any of the other plug-and-play cameras.